Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another special rendition of the critically acclaimed televised series, Max's Cooking for Experts. Now, before I hand things off to tonight's platter of delectable goodies, I have a very unique burning question from one of the Twitter Live followers. Now, this is from Taylor Swift Lover 44 out of Nevada. Hi, Max. I love your show. <laughs> Thanks. I was wondering, is there a better way to make the perfect sandwich? Can you demonstrate how to spice up a sandwich to perfection? Well, Taylor Swift Lover 44 out of Nevada, thank you for this special request. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we can craft this masterpiece, we must understand the four key components that go into the perfect sandwich. So I would like to point your attention to this visualized construct I have on my presentation board. Ingredient one, the bread. Ingredient two, filling. Number three, the bread. And finally, the love. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we kick things off and actually begin to craft this creative, unique, perfect sandwich, we must always remember rule number one at Max's Cooking for Experts, which is, when in doubt, give up. Tough crowd. Well, now that I'm no longer in doubt, and we are no longer shackled by the fear of not creating the perfect sandwich, we can dirty our hands and get started. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring your attention to the dyeing ring. You might be wondering, why is bread the first and third ingredient in our perfect sandwich formula? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember last week's vital lesson, at Max's Cooking for Experts. You would remember that we take everything with a grain of salt because creative cooks are curious. We question things. That is the, that is the path we get to a perfected, innovative sandwich. So ladies and gentlemen, I have taken it upon myself to find out why bread is the first ingredient. Why bread is the third ingredient? Why is it widely accepted that bread has to be the base of a perfect sandwich? How come nobody has decided to use something different or creative? Which is why I will learn the philosophy and the cold hard facts behind making bread a necessity or not in the perfect sandwich. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Max Kibler, and today I am at the critically acclaimed Bagel and Deli Sandwich Expert location here with... Gary Franks. Gary Franks, and Mr. Franks, could you please tell me your philosophy on bread? Because I understand that Bagel and Deli uses bagels as opposed to regular bread. Could you tell me why you've made that decision or why bread is an, isn't a necessity to make a quote-unquote perfect sandwich? Or we have been doing this for like 45 years almost now, and um, actually way back when we started out, we subs were a big thing too. We still had, actually come in here and get a sub, not very many people do. But the bagels um, caught on big time. We use a good bagel from uh, 
beer from a place called Mark's Hot Bagel in Cincinnati. It's like a kosher bagel place, and they've been making bagels. Like, we've been making sandwiches. And uh, they're like, a, you know, about as close as you get to like an East Coast kind of bagel here. And they just, you know, they hold up well. We do hot sandwiches, a bagel's more dense. Holds up a lot better under the heat, and then you've got you know like 18 different flavors you can combine with your sandwich toppings. Got it. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Frank. No it's problem. Been a pleasure. Thank right. you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after I have become so enlightened by the different philosophies, the do's and the do nots of bread in making a perfect sandwich. I have concluded that for our formula in making a perfect sandwich, the bread I am going to use, bananas. Now you may be wondering, why bananas? That's not even a bread at all. Well, my viewers, let me explain. Everything is up for interpretation. I have concluded, after finding out all of these different informations about breads and the different types of breads, that it doesn't matter exactly what you use, which is why I'm going to innovate. I'm going to embrace the unknown and the possibility of doing something that's outside of the norm, which is why my bananas will be my bread for our perfect sandwich formula. Now, if you recall, the diagram which I included that had the ingredient list for the perfect sandwich. You will remember that the next one in succession would be filling. Now, what goes into a perfect sandwich? This is an excellent question, which is why I will take it upon myself to go off-site to get some insider scoop feedback about what can go into the filling for this perfect sandwich. I will see you in a bit. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am here with... Jacob. Jacob, and we are going to find out what goes inside the perfect sandwich. Now, Jacob, if you could explain to me what the filling is of your perfect sandwich. What kind of ingredients go into the meat of your sandwich? All right, so cheese, bacon, a fried egg, and then some other kind of meat, maybe some vegetables in there. Gotta have sauce. Good sauce. What kind of sauce, if I could ask? Depends what your meat is. So, like, if you're going for corned beef and you don't have the fried egg, you have like a Thousand Island dressing and then some herb vegetable, you have sauerkraut. It's pretty distinguished. Got it. That sounds perfect. Well, thank you very much, Jacob, yeah. and tune in next time to see who we ask next. Back, ladies and gentlemen, for part two, today I'm with... Cameron. Cameron, and we are going to ask Cameron, what goes into the perfect sandwich for you? If you could describe the filling of your perfect sandwich. I'm sorry. Oh, then... I really don't eat them. Okay, so could you tell me the worst ingredient in a sandwich? Like ham. Ham, definitely. All right. And any other really bad ingredients you would stray Mustard. away from? Mustard. So some sauces, ham. Any types of cheeses you don't like? Most cheeses. Most cheeses. Cheese. Ham mustards are no goes. Well, thank you so much, Cameron. You have a wonderful rest of your day. And welcome back to our third rendition, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm with... Julia. Julia, and we are going to find out, Julia, can you explain to me what goes into the perfect sandwich for you? What is the filling okay. of the perfect sandwich? I like a Jimmy John's Unwitch, number four, so it's a turkey tom, uh, tomatoes, and then add cucumbers, hot peppers, and mustard. That's, that's my perfect sandwich. Cucumbers, hot peppers, and mustard. And Julia, could you tell me what your profession is here at the rec center? I teach group fitness classes. Group fitness class instructor. What kind of classes do you teach? This is kickboxing, and I also teach kettlebell blasts and hardcore abs. That is fantastic. Amazing. Well, Julia, thank you so much for your incredible answers about the perfect sandwich. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your thank day. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, after that short excursion and all this athletic advice about what goes into the filling of a perfect sandwich, to recap, allow me to explain what I have found out. Bacon is fantastic. Mustard, that sucks. Ham, don't even think about it. But most importantly, if you ever find yourself at a Jimmy John's, be sure to order the number four. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after finding out all these different perspectives, after looking at things from a different angle and gaining new insights as to what goes into the filling for your perfect sandwich, 
I have concluded that it doesn't matter whatsoever. The medium of your perfect sandwich is something that you interpret, you innovate, because if you remember from Max's Cooking for Experts, creative cooks question things. We wonder, why is this the norm? Why do people need to use bread? Why can't it be bananas? We wonder, what's the possibility behind things? We embrace how things might not go in the same light that one individual may see from another individual. And also, we are not afraid to take the risk and come up with a new exciting recipe, which is why, to conclude our perfect sandwich formula, I have devised to use spinach and spicy chicken tenders drizzled with honey. Now, the only thing left to do to conclude this episode and rendition of Max's Cooking for Experts is to make the creation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank Taylor Swift Lover 44 for giving me this incredible idea. And without further ado, I give to you my rendition of the perfect sandwich. It's not that bad. <laughs> 